Dwight Douglas Furness was born December 11, 1959 in Commerce, Oklahoma, and started off as a football player who won his high school state's championship and junior college national championship, as well as taking part in the Denver Broncos training camp, until he would find more success in powerlifting competitions and set 29 powerlifting world records and is still to this day the most dominant 275 pounder lifter in history. Until he would begin his wrestling debut, his first match was on February 8, 1987 for Continental Championship Wrestling, tagging with Wendell Cooley, defeating the team of Chris Colt and Kevin Sullivan in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Civic Coliseum. Philip Lafont was born September 16, 1961 in Manitouaj, Ontario. Philip is much more cut and dry. Like 88% of wrestlers of the time, he was discovered in a gym purely based on his size by Davy Boy Smith and Tom Willington and trained by Mr. Hito in Stu Hart's Dungeon in Calgary, Alberta. He debuted for Stampede Wrestling on June 7, 1983, defeating David Morgan in Regina, Saskatchewan. Both of these men have had impressive solo careers, but we aren't here for that today, are we? Oh no, we are here for something far more special. This is the wrestling career of the Can-Am Express. Welcome to Wrestling Through the Ages. Let's get this deep dive going and get right into the Can-Am Express. Before tagging together, both men would be working for Giant Baba's All Japan Pro Wrestling in 1988, with Philip Lafont going as Danny Crawford using his wrestling hero's name, Dan Crawford. Dwight Douglas Furness simply removed his first name. Giant Baba would notice these two tall muscular men, and on October 10, 1988, history was made when he paired them together alongside Dan Spivey, losing the team of Jumbo Saruda, Canadian sumo legend John Tenta, and Yoshiaki Yatsu. For All Japan Pro Wrestling Giant Series Tag 1988 in Saitama, Japan. Their next tag matches would take place October 12, 1988, defeating Masonobu Fuji and Mighty Inoi in Kagoshima, Japan. October 19, 1988, in Jifu, Japan, defeating Mighty Inoi and Takashi Ishikawa. October 20, 1988, Shinichi and Tiger Mask would bring it down to a double countout in Nagano, Japan. October 23, 1988, pairing with Greg Brown and losing to Akira Tao, Shinichi Nakano, and Tiger Mask in Akita, Japan. Their first Japanese tour was quite successful, and Giant Baba would be bringing them back to Japan a lot. In late 1988, Danny Crawford would do a couple of shows for Capital Sports Promotions in Puerto Rico. Doug Furness will also do a couple of shows, but for Tennessee's Continental Wrestling Federation, both would team back up in March and fly back to Japan, champion Carnival of 1989. 17 days later, Doug Furness and Danny Crawford had old-time friends also wrestling in Japan. The British Bulldogs mentioned to Doug and Danny that Japan loves tag team names, and they should adopt one real quick. Thus, the Canadian American Express was born, or the Can-Am Express for short. The Can-Am Express would embark on May's Super Power Series tagging 18 times, winning 7 matches, and on June 5, 1989, the Can-Am Express wins the All-Asia Tag Team title, defeating Team Revolution. They would go on to defend their tag belts successfully during 1989's Summer Action Series 2, until they eventually lost the tag team belts 137 days later to Team Revolution on October 20, 1989 in Aichi, Japan. They were unsuccessful in winning back the belts during All Japan Pro Wrestling's Real World Tag League. Excite Series, they win it back from Team Revolution, this time keeping the belts only for 38 days, losing it to the technical masters Kanta Kobashi and Tiger Mask. In Okayama, Japan, during All Japan Pro Wrestling Champion Carnival, four days later, they would join the WWF, All Japan Pro Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Wrestling Summit Joint TV Show, in Tokyo Dome, tagging with Joe Malenko and defeating the team of Footloose. The Can-Am Express would win the titles yet again during Fan Appreciation Day Festival at Korokun Hall, Tokyo, Japan, defeating Dynamite Kid and Johnny Smith on April 20th of 1991 and would retain the championship this time around for 79 days. But we gotta move a little faster or we will be here a while. So here is a montage of their next four years 
wrestling for All Japan Pro Wrestling. All you need to keep in mind is that they didn't just wrestle for All Japan Pro Wrestling, they dominated as one of the top new Gaijin tag teams of the 1990s. Seven days later, the Can-Am Express would fly down to Mexico for three shows, wrestling for the UWA, tagging with Buffalo Allen and losing twice to Elkanek and Mil Mascaras and Villano 3, before pinning them on the 3rd, 15th of 1992 in Estado de Mexico, and returning to All Japan Pro Wrestling a week later, joining March's 1992 Champion Carnival, defeating Masanobu Fuchi and Mighty Inoue. Here is a compilation of the following matches. They would take a long overdue two-month break before embarking on the second 19, 1993 All Japan Pro Wrestling Excite Series against the Blackhearts. They would return to the UWA on March 19, 1993, losing to Dos Caras, El Texano, and Silver King. In Estado de Mexico, they would return to Japan 14 days later on April 2nd, 1993, for that year's Champion Carnival. They would wrestle Tsuruta Gun, Joel Deaton and Davy Boy Smith, May 14's Super Power Series, facing off against Abdullah the Butcher and Giant Kimala, Barry Horowitz and The Patriot, Super Generation Army, The Patriot and The Eagle, Jun Akiyama and Takao Omori, and then eventually rolled around the Summer Action Series 2, Kobashi and Asako, Thunder and Lightning, Richard Slinger and Steve Williams, The Eagle again, and Tracy Smothers, Big Man Stan Hansen and Ted DiBiase, the Can-Am Express would win the tag titles at the final match of Summer Action Series, defeating the Patriot in the Eagle. They would defend that championship for a lengthy 452 days before vacating the title and focusing on the All Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championship belts and would take part in 1993's Giant Series. We are already going to see a lot of the previous tag team they wrestled, so I will try to skim over most that we've already seen. Please check out the Can-Am Express in Japan. Their last Japan match was against Gary Albright and the Lacrosse on the 6th of 4th, 1996 in Kanigawa, Japan. Their first UWA championship lasted a total amount of 133 days. Upon returning to the States, they answered a call from the WWF. Dan Crawford would use his previous in-ring moniker, Phil Lafon, and on 11-17 of 1996, at that year's Survivor Series, they would team up with the Godwins and defeat the team of the new Rockers and the Hart Foundation. Following this match, they would defeat the team of the Headbangers on 11-19-1996 on episode 530 of WWF Superstars at the Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, before embarking on a house show winning streak against the new Rockers, a total of seven matches. They would then win 10 matches in a row against Diesel and Razor Ramon, but only on house shows. 
Doug and Philip would wrestle against the Headbangers on WWF Shotgun Saturday on 111 of 1997. The Owen Hart and British Bulldog on the 1st of 20 of 1997 Raw before starting a feud against the Hart Foundation, failing to pin the team for the tag belts. Philip and Doug would wrestle the likes of Bob Hawley, Salvador Sincere, Aldo Montoya, Alex Porto, lose to the Hart Foundation in a series of house shows before making their third WWF pay-per-view appearance at 1997's WrestleMania 13. It was a poorly written tag bout. Following WrestleMania, they would wrestle on house shows and Saturday night shotguns against the new Blackjack. The Godwins lose and win to the Legion of Doom. The Can-Am Express were a formidable force in Japan and once brought over to the States, it seemed McMahon had no clue what direction to push this team towards. Not winning the title a single time and losing to the new Blackjacks in a series of house shows before being sent to the ECW. Paul Heyman and McMahon had a type of pseudo deal where they would sort of exchange talent back and forth, which I'm sure you're all aware about, so I won't go into any further detail. Doug Furness and Philip Lafon would have some of their best matches the type they would have in Giant Baba's All Japan Pro Wrestling, making their ECW debut on I-26 of 1997 against All Snow and Paul Diamond, wrestled three times in one night at Orlando Fairgrounds against the FBI, Mikey Whipwreck and Spike Dudley, Danny Morrison. They would return to the WWF on Survivor Series of 11-9-1997, being part of Team Canada alongside Jim Neidhart and the British Bulldog, defeating Blackman, Vader, Mero, and Goldust. They wrestled the following night on Shotgun Saturday, defeating Flash Funk and a young Scotty Duhati. McMahon would send them back to ECW. They would win their last tag team championship belts in Walton, Massachusetts, defeating the FBI. That would be their shortest reign. The Can-Am Express were ending their tag team run, making their final WWF appearance, Jeff and Matt Hardy, the Hardy Boys. Philip Lafon and Doug Furness surprisingly finished their tag team career in ECW, pinning Chris Jetty and Jerry Lynn in Blackwood, New Jersey on 12 27, 1997. Doug Furness would fail to win the TV title against a solo run against RVD, and after 20 matches in the course of six months, called it quits and retired from wrestling altogether. Philip Plafon would wrestle for CMLL under Blue Blazer 2 moniker. He wrestled two shows for Stampede Wrestling, two shows for CAWF, Return to the Land of the Rising Sun, Edmonton's Monster Pro Wrestling, Calgary's Canadian National Wrestling Alliance. Lafon retired in 2006. Philippe Lafon would begin training wrestlers in Western Canada for Edmonton-based promotion Monster Pro Wrestling. The Can-Am Express, were they ahead of their time? No. Were they awful wrestlers? Hell no. Were they lost in the shuffle of tag teams during the mid-1990s? Sadly, yes. And it's a damn shame they couldn't gain traction here in North America as compared to their very successful runs in Japan. Philippe Lafon would go on to graduate from Northwest College with a diploma in social work. Sadly, Doug Furness would pass away at the young age of 52 years old due to hypertensive heart failure, suffering a super ventricle tachycardic episode. Can-Am Express were a fantastic tag team mixing cruiserweight moves with powerful technical wrestling holds and is in my opinion one of the greatest mixed Canadian-American tag teams of all time. Thanks for tuning in to this very lengthy episode. Thanks for your ongoing support and let me know in the comments who some of your favorite tag teams are. I'll see you next Friday for another episode of Wrestling Through the Ages.